sure enough, they tried to rob us. Um, but the silly cunts only brought a knife to a gunfight, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> You've been waiting to say that one for a long time, haven't you? <laughs> and now you said uh, it on air. Well done, yes. mate. <laughs> uh, so, and that was fucking dead set how it happened, you know? Yep. Like, fucking, they tried to sort of, like, take the money and fucking get out of there. And, you know, I just had the shoddy sitting between my legs in the front seat. And, yeah, and just I uh, just shot him in the knee to fucking take him out sort of thing. And, mm. Yeah, that was that was it. Um, right. Everyone who knew something about it fucking told on me, except for my young mate. He was only nineteen at the time. Like he was, um, he was the only one who kept his mouth shut. Legends, welcome to another episode of the Interchange Podcast, and thank you for joining me, your host Ben Lowe. Now, before we go any further, I do have a very small favor to ask, as I always do, and I'm only going to ask this one thing, and that is that if you have been liking the podcast. And you can think of anyone else that might enjoy it. Please go and hit that subscribe button and share it with just one of your friends. Because as you know, the more eyes and ears we can get on the podcast, the bigger and better guests I can bring for you guys. And in turn, the more value we're going to be able to deliver. But over today's guests, I am joined by Dean Marks, who was a career criminal. And after spending almost 14 years of his life in jail, managed to turn his life around and was saved, I guess, by fitness. And is now using uh, the same thing that saved him to help so many other people. So quite a story of redemption, Marksy. Quite a story of redemption, brother. Yeah, it is, Benny. Thanks for having me on, mate. I appreciate it. Um, I'm yeah. stoked to have you here, brother, and uh, share another story of redemption, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's one of them things, mate. Like, I started off, you know, living... Uh, for, I don't know. How can I say it? I suppose a life of uh, crime and violence and alcohol abuse and yep. drugs and stuff yep. like that. And... I um, ended up, you know, later on in life, I ended up in jail like most people would in that sort of environment. And um, yeah, man, I sort of had a long time to sit there and reflect about, you know, all my mistakes and what had happened to me and all this sort of stuff over the years sitting in there. And uh, oh, but it would have been some long nights just banging your fucking head on the wall going, why the fuck did I do that, right? Oh, mate, there's so many things that I've relived over in my head, man. Like so many things, yeah. And um, I sort of, I don't know, I still I still think about it today, but, you know, like we're living a bit of a different life these days, Benny. Fucking oath, like, brother. Yeah, so. Couldn't be happier to be doing that either. Yeah, it's it's good, yeah. Well, let's circle back, man. You said, obviously, from a very young age, you were sort of living that life of crime, life of drugs, you know, all the things that came with it. So what was life growing up for you like? Uh, well, from a very young age, like I was born in Melbourne. Right. Um, I was there till about nine. Um, my dad was a bikey yeah um he was like the sergeant of arms of the hell's angels in right. uh, fairfield in melbourne yeah and um that was for about a 15 year period or something so yep. um that was through like the 70s and 80s and a bit of the 90s and stuff like that so things were a bit different back then with, with bikies these days you know like it's a mm. it's a little bit a little bit of a different vibe these days with the bikies and stuff like that but I grew up around that sort of uh, scene, you know. I was always at the clubhouse, probably, yep. you know. Dad was always out with his mates all the time. and Yeah. We when you at, say um, things are a little bit different with the bikies back then to what they are today, what do you mean by that? I just, like, I think anyone who knows anything about sort of bikies and stuff like that, back then they were all about bikes and a fucking brotherhood of that mm, sort of thing. And yes. Like, they even they did, like, uh, things for the community and, you know, charities and stuff like that. And, like, that it was, it was really about the bikes and stuff like that, where yep. these days I think uh, the bikies have got a big thing hanging over their head these days of they're just all just criminals and fucking you know drug dealers and all the yeah, rest yeah that's right so it's yep. uh it's everyone sort of looks at a bike a little bit differently these days compared to like say 25 30 years ago you so know? 25 30 years ago they would have been quite well well respected within the community to some degree as well yeah they were yeah. definitely it wasn't that sort of you know like um yeah like a outlaw motorcycle gangs and stuff like that they actually brought something to the table in whereas the now it's just ruling out of fear right that's right yeah respect exactly. through fear yeah yep. so 
you know, we used to go out every year to a place called Broadford and uh, they used to hold like big uh, concerts and stuff like that and charity runs and stuff like that and donate money to the sick kids in the hospital and all that sort of stuff, yeah, you know. So yeah. it's a little bit of a different sort of scenario these days, but um, I grew up around that and um, dad was never home either, you know, like he... Um, he was always out with his mates partying and mm. stuff like that. And mm. poor mum was left at home to bloody struggle with us bloody kids who were bloody out of control. How um, many were there in your family? How many brothers and sisters did you have, bro? I've got um, one f blood brother and yep. another half brother who yep. we've got different uh, mothers. The, yeah. the oldest one is a half and us two young. I'm the youngest. Mm. And um, yeah, so... Both my brothers were both heroin addicts by the time they were bloody like 13 years old. Wow, man. Yeah, so... I hear this coming a lot out of Melbourne. Like, there must have been a really big heroin scene down there around that time. Yeah, that's right. It's um, Up here, it's like more ice and speed yeah. and yeah, that back Yeah, more in the, the, the go-go you know? stuff. You yeah, know? that's yeah. right. Down there, Party it was, drugs and yeah, shit. it was definitely like heroin and stuff mm. like that. And me growing up too, like... I'm, you know, I'm two and a half years younger than my second oldest brother. So I grew up looking at them sort of two, this, that sort of shit. And, you know, like, and obviously, you know, dad was Mr. Good Time with his fucking mates and that all the time. And don't get me wrong, like, I don't want to ever, like, bag my dad or anything like, but, mm. you know, he could have done things a, a little bit differently, you know, like, poor mum, she's tried to raise us bloody kids and uh we were just uncontrollable mate now i look back at it fuck man like as as a as now i'm an adult mm -hmm. and i look back and mm. see how we were as kids and just i see kids these days too and i just think fuck you know like fuck man like poor mum fucking <laughs> She had a few nervous breakdowns there and oh, stuff brother, like yeah. that. We, we would have put them through the ringer, bro. My mum was definitely no, no different, brother. Yeah. She was a school teacher, my mum. Yeah. And fucking I raised hell for her, eh? Yeah. Eye-opening, a lot of the things oh, I did. Man, it makes you I feel so bad. And, you know, that's probably one, another another thing that makes me sort of who I am today in that right. aspect of fucking, yep. you know, trying to really do the right thing and try and give a bit back to the parents. and Yeah. Show them that fucking they did the best job that they could, and of course, brother, you know, we're doing all right now, so but yeah, back then it was a bit different, yeah, yeah. So, growing up, obviously, around that environment, um, was that sort of where the life of crime was born from? Because talking off air, we're talking about that, and for you, it wasn't always just the drugs, it was more so the criminal side of things, just you know, I'm not too sure exactly what your you know flavor was, whether it was doing breaks or you know, standover men or anything like that, but it was the, the life of crime that really put you in jail, right. Yeah, definitely. Like, um, I, I haven't got the most people seeing as like drugs. You know, sent me crazy, and I started doing all this mad shit. You know, like I was very, I've always been a very placid person. You know what I mean? Mm. I've always be, had that good nature to me. Yeah, but, you definitely got that energy about you, bro. Like the general yeah. giant. For anyone that can't see, Marks, he's fucking tall. Yeah. What are you, bro? Like six foot seven? No, six yeah. foot fucking nine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. built like a motherfucker too. <laughs> But yeah, so it's fucking, it's, um, yeah, and I always had that gentle nature about me, but like, you know, it probably started off stealing and stuff like that when I was a kid. Like, yep. man, dead said, I, I had my first criminal charge when I was six years old, you know, and wow. 1989. Jesus. Yeah. 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 And uh, a willful damage charge as well. And um, I was, you know, sometimes, man, like, I was riding fucking trains in Melbourne when I was six years old. Yeah. You know, like, fucking getting brought home by the police and shit like that. Like, is this your kid sort of thing, you know? Mm. Like, and I look at six-year-olds these days, man, I'll go, fuck, I wouldn't let this fucking little bastard out of my sight. Bro, my know? son's like, five. Yeah. He barely crosses the road without me fucking yarding to look, like, left and right, you know what I mean? That's right, man. Fucking so, hell, how times have changed. Yeah, like, you know, and anyone who's been to Melbourne and knows that, like, Melbourne's not a bloody place that you just... Like, let your kid run around. Man, no way. Yeah. You know, so... I, you know, started that early with that sort of stuff. Like, you know, I was bloody terrorizing the fucking street, buddy. You know, 
doing shit to people's houses, filling bloody a bloke's car up full of fucking water, putting a hose in his bloody window and Just like, doing kid shit. Yeah, just bloody filling his car up full terror. of water and stuff like that. Just just doing crazy shit, you know. And I I talked to my mum about it and she's like, You were only four years old when you were doing that shit, you know Fuck what I mean? Right. And and I'm just like, Are you fucking serious? Like fuck. But um and then as the old thing, as I got older, everything started escalating, you just know. Just ramping I mean? it up right That's as you get older, right, things exactly, start to change. Yeah. yeah, and obviously my brothers both being fucking off the rails as well. Like my oldest brother was a proper neo Nazi dude, fucking Yeah, we are. Yeah, like he was shit you see on like the movies, you know, and it was like yep. they had the full gang, fucking big Doc Martin boots and shit and he went to jail for buddy bashing a Sri, Lank- Sri Lankan lady yeah. to just take her jewelry off her, you know? Like, Fuck, bro, that's heavy. Like proper fucking crazy shit, you know? And I like despised him for it, you know? Like yeah, I man. just, I he's one fucking, I don't get along with him one bit, you know? Like he's, he's a dude that I fucking, if anyone gets me going, it's fucking him, you know? Yeah, right. I've, I haven't seen him since I was 19. And he's, he's still got similar belief to that? I don't know. No, I, I I don't think so. But he's got all the German fucking white power written all over him and shit like that. Big SWAT stickers and that. So he um, yeah, he him and his mates were bad eggs, mate. You know what I mean? And I I was only a young <coughs> kid, but I knew fucking like I could feel the bad energy coming out of them bastards. You know, kids pick up on energy, yeah, bro. bro. Kids pick up on energy. Something that you said before as well. I just wanted to bring back and touch on is because you were doing so much hectic shit as a young kid. And starting so early with it, obviously to get excitement, you had to just step it up and do more and more and more. It's like that constant need for excitement, that constant need for validation. When you do it a little bit, you need more and more of it to get the same feeling, right? Yeah. And like, I think um, what I've noticed now that I'm an adult and I'm obviously thinking a lot clearer these days, I think I just like had this thing in me, man, was like, if if I sh- shouldn't be doing it, I do it. I want to do it. Yeah. It's like I had that about me. I didn't think about it at the time, but now I look back, it's just Mm. like I used to just do shit that you should not do. And there must have been a little demon in my head or something that fucking wanted me to do it. You know what I mean? So, Well, kids either do the compliant or they do the defiant. Yeah. And it sounds like you and I are both the defiant. Yeah. There was no complying. If they said fucking don't do this, you do the complete opposite of what they said. Oh, yeah. Like, I was always like that. If someone tried to get me to do something, I definitely wouldn't do it. Yeah. Like, you tell me to do something, (laughs) I'm definitely not doing it. I'm doing it because I want to do it, not because you told me to. Yeah, that's right. So I was always, like that you know and fuck it got yeah. me in a lot of trouble but you I can know imagine bro yeah can so. Imagine. so what was the first major crime for you that really landed you i guess with fucking looking at time or in some real trouble with the law well the first um oh there's there so many man like so many but um real bad i think when i was 17 i I hit a security guard over the head with a nine bar mm. and uh, give him 14 stitches across the side of his head Fuck. and nine across his throat. Yeah. And uh, that was in like a a fight at the front of a pub. Cut a long story short, fucking this bouncer's hit my mate out the front um, and me being the the bigger mate, I was fucking skinny as, bro. I was like a fucking prey manis, but fucking, I was, I was. <laughs> Our times have changed. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was this height at 18. So yeah. I was pretty much six foot nine when I was 17, you know? So, yeah, yeah, we are. And um, I always used to run the ball up with that sort of shit, you know, like any, any sort of violent stuff or whatever. I was the one that put me hand up sort of thing. And, mm. uh, and there was a big fight broke out and uh, one of my mates, he um, kicked one of the A-frames out the front of the pubs that used to, you know, like have all the prices on there for the yep. beers and all that. He kicked the middle bit out and it was like a, a an iron sort of bar and he kicked it out of the frame and he bloody threw it over to me and then I just thought I was like fucking Braveheart and I started fucking swinging it around, you know, and I took the biggest bloke out with that and buddy... That got me in a bit of trouble. I can yeah. imagine, yeah. Yeah, so that was probably 
Fuck, there's probably fucking more than that, but like that's one that sticks out in my mind because uh, he was a he was a screw out at the jail as well. Yeah, right. Yeah, and uh, so was that the first thing you got locked up for? No, no, no. And then um, obviously, fuck, fights every weekend. I lived in Rockhampton, mate. You know, if you're drinking and you're fighting or you're trying to pick up a chick, that's all you're doing. Fighting, fucking, and that's running right. amok. Exactly. Yeah. You know. And- so for anyone that doesn't know, Rocky's a little, uh, I guess, country town up in uh, sort of northern Queensland, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Not much to do there apart from fight and fucking carry on. Man, that was. Especially, yeah, that was it. Yeah. You know, and like, and I I come from, you know, like when mum left when we were kids, like we le- ended up leaving Melbourne and ended up back and we went to Phillip Island for a couple of years, but um, my mum ended up meeting at like another bloke um, a couple of years later. Mm. And because my dad was a bit of a hothead sort of a fucking dude as well, he sort of made the decision of like, we're going to get, we got to get out of here because one day I'll end up doing something fucking stupid and then these kids won't have a fucking parent to look after you. So that's how we ended up in Rockhampton. So you went with the old boy? Yeah. yeah. So we jumped in the car and we just started, we we're going to go to Darwin. He goes, I just, we just got to get as far away as possible. So I'm not tempted to go around and do something stupid to this bloke, you know? Yeah. What I mean? And then we got to Rockhampton and we like stopped there overnight or whatever and stay there and like, you know, Dad's had a bit of a look around going, oh, what do you think of this place? And, buddy, I was just sick of driving too, I remember. I'm like, yeah, fuck Pull the cunt over, let's yeah, just fucking stop, Dad. Yeah, yeah, fuck it. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm good here. Yeah, you know? and, this will just about do me, I reckon. Yeah, so, and that's dead set how we ended up in Rocky Hampton, bro. Just, like, pulled up and just like, fuck, I'm sick of driving. Let's fucking live here. And uh, that's how I ended up there. And, yeah, uh, right. Yeah, man, and fucking... Yeah, fuck. Where were we going with that? Um, about the doing the crimes. Yeah, and then um, obviously there's fucking not much doing there, mate. You know, yeah. Like, and I can after yeah after like mum left and all that, and then dad fucking he was a bikey, mate. He didn't he didn't know fucking how to be a father. You know what I mean? He, he that's it's one thing I'll, I'll take me out off to him. You know, like he when mum finally just left. You know, like she left. Um, and uh, two days later, Dad came home. Like, where the fuck's fucking mum? You know, oh, fuck, she hasn't been here for two days. Mm. She that was their only escape. That was the only way she was going to get away. She mm. had to just fucking leg it, you know. Yeah, his dad would have found her. He knew that many people in Melbourne. Like, yeah, mum couldn't get away. You know yeah, what I mean? so that was her way out. You know, and she just fucking took off. And uh, me and my brother were there for a couple of days until Dad come home and then um after that uh, dad's gotta you know try and learn how to be a dad i suppose and fucking gotta show up figure it all out you know yeah. and i'll take me out off for him for that he sort of he tried you know obviously fucking he had a big fucking task out of him too like and, three um, boys on his hands yeah it's pretty heavy brother living in housing commission up in fucking Rockhampton and stuff like that. And he still lives in a housing commission house today, mm. you know, and um, that's the environment that I grew up in, like into my teenage years and stuff like that. So in that sort of environment as well, living in Rockhampton, everyone's fucking <laughs> alcoholic and fucking drug addict or whatever. And mm. That's as good as it was getting at that time, you know, and yeah, and that's probably what sort of started, you know, the trajectory forward, right? Even the path to where I was eventually fucking ended up, you know. Yeah. And the yeah the the first the first time I got incarcerated was when I was nineteen, and uh, funny funnily enough, it was for something that I didn't even do. But so it was there, right? Yeah, that's right. It was like one of them ones. Like you just see like this wrongful imprisonment. Fucking the chief, story. it wasn't even me. Exactly, bro. I was fucking one of them fucking dudes. And uh, but fuck, it was my like I'm definitely not playing uh like the poor me card because my life and how that was 
even though I didn't do what they said, I did, all the shit that I had been doing. Like, You're probably lucky to yeah. get caught. If, even though you didn't get caught for something you did, to get caught for that thing because you would have probably got caught for a lot more. I mean, fucked. Exactly. So it was like, I'm not this innocent dude who just get gets it, framed for something. I get know? it. Like, yeah. I was just not the stiff sitting in an office that's fucking pushing his pen and gets locked up for an armed robbery charge. Exactly, bro. <laughs> so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there was like a like a um, home invasion. Obviously, I won't go into any sort of names or anything, of but there was there was a home invasion and uh, the victim said that there was a, a tall man tall masked man who was there as well i was known in the town for obviously being a fucking bad cunt being a bit of a standover man and doing that sort of shit oh not a standover man but just i was a criminal in that town who was a tall fucking dude small town too and i got found on the on the streets that night yeah of when the home invasion happened yeah about about half an hour after it happened yeah and the cop has seen me at a servo and they've come and arrested me and taken me away and uh anyway i got remanded in custody for them you know they obviously when the coppers have got it there for you mate like they can bend the fucking rules whichever way they want and next minute i'm 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 on the fucking on the bus mate and i'm fucking going out towards the fucking prison and uh I sat there for six months until I got to a, my <coughs> committal hearing. And uh, when the evidence has got to be produced before they hand it up, that's when they've gone, well, the judge is like, so all you've got on this bloke is- He's tall. He's a tall bloke. A tall masked man was there and you found this bloke on the street half an hour after it happened. Is that all you've got on this bloke? And the prosecution couldn't come up with anything else. And he's like- you say fucking got to be kidding me and they fucking dropped the charges and they fucking let me go. So I spent six months in custody for that. But I'm no fucking angel, you know what yeah, I mean? You, you just got to nod your head to that well, one, eh? Well, they could have got me for something I did do, but yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, and like, yeah. uh, anyway, so that was that. And then, uh, yeah, fucking eight weeks later, I got pinched on a fucking shooting charge down here on the Gold Coast. It's a good place for it. Yeah, so that was... Uh, that was the next one. That was only eight weeks after I got out. So. Yeah, right. So did you meet some people up there that were from the Gold Coast or did you have mates down here already? Because something that I've noticed with jail is that we go in there, we meet each other and fucking all of a sudden we run the ball up together. <laughs> you might not have any friends when you go in there. You come out as a fucking armed robber or a fucking drug dealer from fucking, you know? <laughs> exactly. Having right. all these connections now and having all these people to move the gear to and whatever it might be. And it's like that yeah. birds of the feather flock together, right? You find yeah. your crew in there, people are doing the same sort of shit, and you just end up fucking becoming, you know, a network of people. Exactly, and there's like two types of blokes, you know. You'll either fucking, you know, it'll be a big shell shock for you, and you'll learn your fucking lesson. You'll never do it again, <laughs> or you'll just become better at it. You yeah, know what I yeah, mean? that's right. You got so. fucking, you know, everyone in there has been doing the same shit, and they'll tell you how to do it better, how yeah. to get it cheaper, how to fucking, you know, package it up even better. That's right. All the stuff. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> But um, yeah. So then, when I I I didn't meet anyone from the Gold Coast while I was in there. But one of my friends um, at the time, he was like a younger dude. He sort of looked up to me a bit as well, and he was uh, doing pushing a few pills and shit back in the day and stuff like that around town. And he come to me one day and goes, "Oh, I'm, I'm going down to the." the Gold Coast to go pick some fucking pills up. I'm like, oh, yeah, fucking, do you know these blokes? He's like, nah. I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, well, that's why I'm coming to see you. <laughs> he goes, I want you to come with me. And I'm like, started asking a few questions, a bit of background about how this is all fucking come about and all that sort of stuff. <clears throat> and um, I said to him, I don't think this is a good idea. He goes, yeah, well, fuck, there's nothing around, mate. I've got to do something. I've fucking got no money, you know. Gut feeling was telling you otherwise. Yeah, like I, I was, the danger signs were all over it, you mm. know. And, and uh, he was going, he was going anyway, you know. And I went, all right. I said, have you got a fucking gun? And he's like, yep. He goes, all right. When are we leaving? <laughs> so, you know. that's all I need to know. Yeah. at this point in time. That's right. Just because I, I just knew that fucking something we needed not, something yeah. like that, you yeah. know. And um, anyway, we've come down and it's all been arranged and stuff like that. And then the goalpost kept getting moved a little bit. And I'm like, 
I said to him, I said, man, fucking, this is not right. Fucking, they're going to try and rob you for sure. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I think, you, I think you're spinning out a bit, you know. Like I said, man, you're not going to be the one who has to shoot someone if something happens, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm telling you, this is not fucking right. And uh, the driver and him were obviously both trying to convince me that it was just me spinning out. And I'm like, all right, let's go. <laughs> Fuck it, let's do it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. we go. Sure enough, they tried to rob us, um, but the silly cunts only brought a knife to a gunfight, didn't they? <laughs> You've been waiting to say that one for a long time, haven't you? <laughs> and now you said uh, it on air. Well done, uh, mate. <laughs> uh, so, and that was fucking dead set how it happened, you know? Yep. Like, fucking, they tried to sort of, like, take the money and fucking get out of there and... Yeah, I just had the shoddy sitting between my legs in the front seat. Well, that's one thing I was going to say. They're fucking fucking with a bunch of farm boys. Yeah, well, motherfuckers got guns. Yeah, so <laughs> and yeah, and just I uh, just shot him in the knee to fucking take him out, sort of thing. And mm. yeah, that was that was it. But, right. um, everyone who knew something about it fucking told on me, except for my young mate. He was only nineteen at the time. Like he was, um, he was the only one who kept his mouth shut. Everyone else who knew something about it, fucking they all told on me. Fuck, straight yeah. on the finger, pointing the finger. Yeah, and then I got arrested back up in Rocky a week Heavy. later. Yeah. Yeah. And so, did you have an idea that you were getting rolled on, that those people coming for you? Um, what, like coppers? Did, yeah, did you have an idea that the coppers were onto you, onto you for that one? Yeah, like I, that was one of, another thing I sort of, it's like I didn't give a fuck about anything, you know. But mm. what I was trying to do was obviously I'd only been out of fucking jail seven weeks myself. I was trying to get back on my feet. Yeah, get a bit of income of, coming in. You know, instead of doing the right thing and going and getting a job and fucking, you know, starting earning a wage, I'm thinking, fucking, well, old mate wants to pay me some money to go down with him. Yeah. I didn't have much money at the time, you know what I mean? So I was like, all right, I'll help you. Obviously, because I needed money myself as well. Yeah, well, that's one thing I struggled with a lot as well after going to jail. Like, I didn't really have a trade behind me. I started selling gear when I was about fucking 15 years old, and the only job I had prior to that was working at McDonald's. Yeah. You know, I had no trade, no nothing like that. And when you get stuck in that lifestyle and you're around the same shit, you keep repeating the same patterns because it's like, well, how can I get money? I'm yeah. not going to get a fucking nine to five and work for fucking, you know, 15 to $25 an hour because I've got no qualifications. Yeah. I'm going to do what I've always done. Especially when you're so used to living a certain lifestyle as mm. well benny you know mm. what I yeah mean? Like, 100%, that's where bro. every bloke i know runs into trouble mate they yeah. are so used to just bloody easy come easy go sort having of what thing. they want yeah, you know man, the girls like, the drugs the money man being at the pokies being on the piss that's right yes bro and even if they're earning a decent wage of saying <clears> you know say it's like 1500 bucks a week or whatever still to them they're like fuck man i'm they feel like killing themselves because they think like they're failing but not they're actually back at reality you know yep. like you cannot They're back in the normal world. Yeah, you cannot sustain that level of fucking bullshit and expect to fucking, you know, live a normal life because it's That's it's it. not a normal life. That's man, it. You're you trading know? one thing for the other. Yeah. And like the normal life, like I guess you call it the stiff life, like it's not all that bad. It's no. really not all that bad, brother. You know, you obviously find ways to work around it. But when you're living that life of crime, well, obviously like you were and obviously with me living like around the you know, in the life of drugs, you're always looking over your shoulder. You've got that stress there all the time. You don't know whether you know, he's going to come for you. This is going to happen. You probably won't have to worry about that because you're six foot nine, but <laughs> it'd be me worrying about you coming for me. <laughs> You'd be the bloke kicking the door in. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's just a completely different kettle of fish and you're trying to compare the fucking two. There's yeah. no comparison. Yeah, that's right. You know, so you went in for how long on that one? Um, I got sentenced to four years and I got out of, on parole after two and a half. So, yeah. um, yeah, I was lucky, man. Like I fucking, oh, yeah, I, I thought I'd be serving, I'd be serving that straight, you know. But yeah, well, um, for a shooting these days, you're looking at eight to nine. That's what I mean. Like, probably an SVO. Like I, man, if I didn't have my best mate, my best mate, he's passed away now. Um, he, um, fuck, he helped me so much, man. Like I, I probably, I wouldn't be in the position that I am today with without him. Yeah. And um, back then. He paid for a solicitor and a fucking um, barrister and all that for me on that shooting charge. Mm. And, um, man, that barrister did wonders for me on at court. Like, fucking, I dead set. 
thought I'd be at least looking at about five or six me sitting down for you, yeah. you know what I mean? And yeah, like, for sure. Man, he got me a fucking, my head was four years and like, and I could go for parole after two. You Probably know? kick goals on that one, eh? Yeah, and fuck, man. So I got out. I got out from there and then, um, yeah, I was I was only out seven months this time as well. But um, this this time now, when I was in for the shooting, this uh, my brother, um, he's always had this feud going with this one bloke in fucking town, like around his woman, you know what I mean? Mm. Like he's got a kid to this chick and this chick's ended up going, leaving him and hooking up with this other bloke. So they've always had this feud, you know? And it's always the way, hey? Man, there's been so many times where, you know, they've clashed. Anyway, um, I was locked up on the shooting and uh, I used to ring my dad every Sunday and uh, have a yarn to him, you know? mm and this <clears throat> one day I rang him and, um, you know, he just sent something in their voice, you know what I mean? I knew, of course, you I pick knew, up on the energy, brother, right away. Yeah, I knew something was wrong, you know, yeah. and I'm like, so what's going on? And uh, then he's gone, uh, fuck, he's told me the, the story that this bloke that my brother always feuds with, um, cut a long story short, he had a thing with my brother again. He's rocked up to my dad's place and there was a push bike there and, it, my brother took his push bike or something and fucking, you know, fucking, I don't know, he must have been fighting with him or whatever, grabbed his fucking push bike and took it. And anyway, the bloke rocked up to my dad's place. Anyway, he's fucking wanting his bike back. And my dad's like, fucking, I don't know, this bike's fucking yours. I'm not giving you the fucking nothing. And, you know, my dad's fucking would have been close to 60 years old then and he's fucking he's not getting around the best anymore he's on a walking stick and that as well you know mm. and um anyway this bloke's fucking cracked the shits and uh he's thrown fucking one of the rocks out of the garden at dad and fucking dad's quickly sort of got behind the door anyway he's pissed off for a fucking a bit and um my brother rang my dad and said fucking give that fucking bike to old mate, you know? And uh, dad's obviously fucking got the shits, you know? And um, dad's like, right, right, eh? well, I'm going to go out and put it on the fucking fence out the fucking front so I don't have to see this fuckwit again because I know something's going to happen, you know? Mm. But before dad could get around the back and grab the fucking bike and put it out the front, uh, this bike's pulled back up again and uh, this time he's jumped out with a big fucking knife. And... Um, He's met me dad in the front yard. Dad's got the push bike and um, old mate's trying to take swipes at fucking me dad with this big knife. Fuck. And um, dad's sort of shielding, you know, him off with the, in between the bike, you know, and um, old mate's end up kicking fucking my dad onto his fucking back off his walking stick and jumped on top of him and held the knife to his throat and uh, threatened his fucking life, you know. Anyway, so he's ended up fucking sort of shaking dad up a bit with that and then, you know, stabbed the fucking car with the knife and carrying on like a fuckwit. And mm. anyway, um, so dad's told me this. I'm fucking in prison. I'm, just fuming for oh, the next few months, just fucking fuck, frothing mate. at the mouth. I don't think I've ever been so angry in my life. can imagine, life, brother. You know? That's and, the uh, last news you want to get when you're in jail and you can't do fuck all, right? That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, I had to sit there and bottle that up for a fucking long time. And I I got out probably 14 months later or something. And uh, 14 months, do you want on that? Yeah. And I don't know, most people were in the same boat with me. Like, you don't touch fucking my mum or my dad. Or, of course. You, know, you, you don't do that. Of course. Especially kicking him off his walking don't even stick him that, bro. and fucking holding a knife to his throat. Yeah. Who the fuck do you think you are? You know what I mean? But um, then I got out and dad just sort of pleaded with me like to fucking don't go fucking looking for him. He doesn't want to lose his son again. You know what yeah, I mean? Of course. So I can see why dad's fucking begging me not to fucking do anything. And I, I promised him, I said, all right, fucking, I'm not going to go looking for him, all right? Fucking, I want to try and stay out and fucking, 
you know, get this fucking family together a little bit, you know, and mm. I'm going to try my best with that sort of stuff. And anyway, I seven months had gone past and I didn't, I, I didn't go looking for him. And then um, one night uh, I had this argument with this one bloke I thought was my friend. And uh, he'd done the wrong thing by me and I sort of was having a bit of a go at him and he sort of, I don't know, I suppose he shit himself a little bit and he was the way out of me having a go at him. He told me, he goes, I know where old mate is right now. I know where he is right now. So he's fucking save himself. He's throwing old mate on the bus. Yeah. And when I'm already upset and fucking angry. He played on it real well. Yeah. And he's like... I know where old mate is right now, you know, and that was it. I fucking, I said, well, you're taking me there. And uh, I just went around there and I, I just punched him until I couldn't lift my arms anymore. Like it, it was dead set to the stage where I had to roll off him and then do a sit up to stand back up because I couldn't put. You just fucked. I couldn't push myself up with my arms and obviously he wasn't looking, he wasn't looking too good after that. Mm. And, um, yeah. And he went to intensive care for fucking like three months or whatever. And I was on life support there for a little bit at the start. And, um, I didn't get arrested straight away. Like they didn't arrest me for about a month. And, uh, the reason for that was, is we're under investigation for trafficking fucking drugs as well. Yeah, so you had the green light at this point. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, wanted to let you hang yourself a little bit more. Yeah, and um, once they had that six supply charges on me, then they come and took me off the street. Yeah, uh, for the GBH of old mate, and um, still didn't know about the investigation of the the trafficking, but they already had me on six supply charges. And then, yeah, three months after I was back in custody for getting old, mate, um, then they come and charge me with trafficking as well. And, um, yeah, that's when the the big lagging started. Yeah, so that was, uh, what, 11 years, wasn't it? Yeah, I served 11, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of that one. It was 13 years, three months, my head sentence, yeah. Yep. And so during this time in prison, you got a lot of time to sit down, you got a lot of time to think. Yeah. Was there a point in that where you were just like, I really need to fucking change something? Because I know for a lot of people, it's when they're sitting incarcerated that they start to go, if I keep doing this shit, same shit's going to keep happening because I am going to get out one day. Was there a point there and like a real realization that you had where you went, I need to do different? Definitely, mate. And I, I, that big one definitely sat me back a bit because even before I got sentenced, because I was on on remand for two and a half years mm. um, before I got sentenced. But yeah, even before I fully got sentenced, I, cause I'd fucked up so many times, you know, in the past of course, and yeah. just repeating the same shit as you were just saying. Like, yep. And, and it didn't take long. I think I was only back in custody 18 months or whatever. And fucking that's when I started looking in the fucking mirror a fair bit, you know, and going fucking, Stop playing the fucking blame game, pointing all the fucking fingers at fucking everything else. Yep. It's you, mate. It's fucking so where's his you. Point, fingers pointing back at you, brother. Yeah. Yeah. So that was one thing that I find that helped me today is where a lot of blokes, you know, go to jail and all that and they'll just fucking sit there and just play the fucking blame game and like no one wants to look at themselves, you know what I mean? Well, that's it, brother. And I think that this is not just even blokes who go to jail, but men in general, a lot of them struggle to take ownership. Yeah. Like, I think this is a big thing. It's one of the things I teach with the people I work with is that where you're at right now in your life, you might not be able to control the circumstances, but you made those fucking choices that put you there, whether you're in jail, whether you're in a fucking job that you fucking hate, whether you're fat and overweight, it doesn't matter. Like, at the end of the day, you made those fucking choices. And as a real man, like, a, a, a true masculine has to step up and take ownership of that definitely mate and that's one thing that i found that i done differently to most people that i know who keep keep making them same fucking mistakes and fucking all that sort of shit and yes, you know, everyone sort of in there it didn't take me long especially on that big one like it, it didn't take me long to sort of 
you know, realize fucking what I had to do. And one thing I had to do was strengthen my mental strength, you know, like, you know, people go to jail and get fit and all that sort of shit because there's nothing else to do. But I knew I had to strengthen my mind, not my fucking muscles, you know, even though I did that as well. I think the two go hand in hand, yeah, right? Yeah. The, the one that I focused on the most was my mental strength, you know, of, uh, yep. you know, yep. not giving in to temptation and stuff like that. And, yep. and that's where I think I started getting my obsession for health and fucking stuff like that. Yep. And I think the, the turning point for me was when I quit cigarettes, man. That, that was the first thing that... What year was that? 2010. Was that when they fucking put the mandatory? No, that was... Nah, 14. I did it four 20... years before they did yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I put myself in that scenario. Like all my... We would sit around and fucking play cards and everyone would be smoking white ox and fucking drinking coffees. And, and how's the smell of it? Yeah. Man, <laughs> back when you smoke, that you, you don't fucking nah. realise that. But now nah. I look at it and just think, did I fucking smell like that or what? Like, oh, bro. In the yard, man. you go out there to the train and every country's just puffing durries. Man, it was uh, like... Cigarette butts everywhere? Yeah. Putrid. Tea bags fucking in the corner of the thing, spit on the walls and fucking, oh, yeah. it was fucking great, wasn't it? Tough, real tough. Yeah. Just something I want to dive a little bit further into there is that you said you had to strengthen your mental um, capacity or obviously strength, strengthen your mindset. What were the things that you did to help you do that? Because, I mean, being in a fucking environment where there's just so much negativity, there's really no positive affirmation around whatsoever. You're literally surrounded by people that are shooting up fucking talking about war stories of how good things were when they were out and they were fucking robbing each other and fucking each other's girls. But you still managed to fucking pull some sort of positive from that. How did that take place? And what were the things that you did to strengthen your mindset while you were in there? Well, the, like I was saying, the, the first <coughs> real thing for me was the, um, breaking a 19-year fucking cigarette habit, you know what I mean? And I got that first go, man. Like, I fucking, I've never had another puff of a cigarette ever again. Fuck and, you, that's um, huge. And being in that environment, as you know, fuck it, it's that's probably the hardest place to fucking do it. One hundred percent. Especially man. when I haven't even been sentenced yet, mm. and I know I'm sitting down for a ten hour. I know it. You know mm. what I mean. And so I've got a lot of stress and a lot of fucking all these excuses going through. And my not really much head. else as a coping mechanism. That's right. Yeah. So once I did that fuck i grew some strength from that man and like fucking then i started challenging myself with other things like you know then i started diving into like dietary stuff as well like starting to eliminate all these fucking things that were fucking no good for me even though i really liked them i'd just fucking sit them there and i'd just stare at them you know what I mean? yeah. and i just wouldn't just torture yourself yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and i just wouldn't do Buying it, the right. tim tams on bob just to look at them man i'm telling you i even sat the fucking packet of cigarettes in my room for a month <clears> and <throat> just looked at every day was it a packet or was it a, a pouch a white ox yeah oh bro how many pinches were you giving out of that bro, <laughs> bro you gotta you gotta pinch down no you're not smoking them <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> and that's but, why it wasn't there after yeah, a month yeah then, mate, so got run in on. It, it goes fucking stale and then <laughs> yeah. i'll fucking throw it away yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um yeah so that was how I started with this fucking like strengthening my mind a bit you know just because I knew when I get released one day, there's going to be temptations from so many things. Fucking Alcohol, yep. fucking, you know, like drugs or whatever, you know, like chasing girls around or whatever it might be. Like all the things that I know are going to fucking fuck me up for where I actually want to be and where I want to go. Mm. So I knew that I had to strengthen that discipline in my fucking my mind, you know. And so I did it with things like that. And then... Man, I went through some crazy fucking like dieting stuff where, you know, like I didn't go through any sugar for like 20 months straight and stuff like that. And, you know, like I'd have people around me every day just like fucking, they used to tell me to calm down. Like, man, you can't. You cannot sustain this sort of shit. You got a long fucking lag in ahead of you. And you're gonna, fucking you, marks. You just go and watch me, cunt. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you, you're gonna burn out. Some can, I'm, some can't. Yeah, and I still even have like mates today who went on that journey with me back then and they're like man i remember saying it to you clear as day fuck man you, you can't keep this intensity you're gonna burn out you know and anyway like i've been out four years now man i'm still doing the same fucking shit and he's just like you're yeah, fucking unbelievable man like fucking and i needed to do it like that so it came down to making a choice for you yeah 
it just came down to making that choice and starting with something small. Well, really not too small. Cigarettes is a pretty fucking big thing to just knock on the head. Yeah. But committing to that one thing and following that through and then adding more stuff to that, that's how you sort of, I guess, strengthen your mindset, would you say? Yeah, definitely. And um, then through, yeah, obviously just all my training stuff, all the buddy, like we used to go running and stuff like that and everyone would sort of have their little buddy headphones in listening to music oh man you should do this it's heaps easy to go i said i want to do it the hard way i want to be in my head the bring whole me the time. fucking head yeah, noise yeah that's right just I, me and my fucking voices that's right that's what i'm <laughs> that's what i'm looking for you know and uh everyone was just like you're fucking nuts man i said no nah, this is how you do it man like yeah i don't, I want, a, I don't want a distraction i want to be feeling every bit of it you know yeah and that's what I used to do, man, and fucking, yeah, and, like, then that day did come, Benny, you know, like, I, I ended up getting out, and, like, it was a little test for me at the end as well, where I was eligible for parole, and I I didn't have a yes, I didn't have a no or nothing, and, like, it was around the, the times of just before COVID, and that kicked in as well, and, um they had me three months over my date without even telling me no, you know. Just dragging it, it out. It wasn't a yes. As they there fucking was, do, brother. And I was just like, you know, and people were like, I don't know how you're fucking. I said, what do you want me to do? You know, What do you want me to fucking get upset? Well, what's that going to get me? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, bro. I, you know, and I just sat there in my own head that's about it. That's a win in their corner, bro. Yeah, that's right. I just did not miss a beat. I did exactly the same thing every day that I always did. I didn't fucking let them show that they rattled me. I yeah. didn't go asking questions. I didn't do anything. I was like, it will come when it's going to come, you know what I mean? And yeah. sure enough, um, I got out and, yeah, I all them little tests along the way of just strengthening that fucking that head – you know, it's helped me so much out here now, man. So much. Mm. So, yeah, there, there were they were that was a couple of them little coping mechanisms that I did because I, man, it's I don't care what anyone says, man. Eleven years of sitting in fucking an environment like that, you, you need something. You know what I mean? You need to hold on to something. You yes, know? bro. Yeah. So there's only a couple of ways you get through it, right? It's holding on to hope or fucking giving in the temptation. Yeah. And most of the people that we know, and we've seen this time and time again, they're given the temptation, brother. Yeah. Blokes that never think about shooting up, bro, to fucking make the pain go away. Just that little bit of sitting there and being so fucking bored and having to think about the shit that they did to put themselves in there. They're fucking given to the temptation, brother. The next minute, they're fucking shooting up in the junkies. Yeah, exactly. How many times have we seen that happen, you know what I mean? Yeah, heaps, bro. So it's fucking wild, brother. Yeah. And then uh, you got out and obviously started your fitness journey out here as well. And from when we were speaking off air, I think it was actually the first time you and me met, which wasn't even that long ago. Obviously, you heard about each other around the traps and whatever, but you said that um, you were always sort of leading the pack in there when it came to training. Yeah. Uh, you were running through people through drills. You were you know, obviously always quite fit. And that was one big thing that you focused on there, but you were able to transition that now into outside. And now you're able to help so many other people to sort of, I guess, start that journey for themselves. So... Getting out from prison and then, I guess, coming back into what we call the, the normal world. How is that for you, bro? Because I remember, like, even just getting out of jail and I only did it after, like, a year and a bit and just even seeing all the cars moving and all that sort of stuff. I had fucking anxiety through the roof. I was wigging out hard. So I can only imagine that, that transition after 11 years would have been quite uh, quite an experience, let's say. Yeah, like, Benny, a, a lot of people ask me that sort of question too because... Um, wh- but honestly, man, like I just was so prepared for it. Mm. I had thought about every single feeling I was going to feel. I, like I, I had a long time to do it. You know what I mean? So like I, <laughs> played across I visualized, ways. I visualized it so much in the because I didn't want, I didn't want there to be that sort of fucking. I didn't want to be that one that sort of struggled in that sense. So I just knew that the mental side of it is what I needed and mm. sure enough it worked for me man dead set I think I was sweet after an hour and a half it's huge I got out bro and I fucking went to the Bow Desert supermarket walking because you got out from Palin Creek right yeah that's yeah, right from the farm yeah yep. so I um I remember getting out and walking into that supermarket to go buy a phone and just going through them air conditioned doors when you first go into like a fucking supermarket sort of thing and like there was a I don't know, it was like the fucking cold air sort of hit me a bit and uh 
And I was just like, fucking, this is really happening, you know? Like, fucking. That was when the penny dropped that you actually had freedom yeah, after so long. Man. That it's was huge. Yeah, that was like a little fucking, I remember it clear as day. And I just gone in, I started talking to this bloke because I, my missus at the time, young fella was with me as well. And he was like, you know, like trying to do everything for me. I'm like, relax, I've got this, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'm not a spastic, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I know what I'm doing. And uh, I've gone over and I've started talking to this bloke in the phone shop. I'm like, I want to get a phone, rah, 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 and fucking SIM card, all that sort of shit. And yeah, and like, as I was just having the conversation, he was just talking to me, obviously, like uh, it was just a- Every day, Tom, Dick, yeah, and Harry. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. yeah, little does he know, I'm just fucking- <laughs> <laughs> Roll it out from a brick. Bro, half an hour. <laughs> like half an hour earlier, like, I was sort of just fucking- Taking yeah. your greens off for the last time. Yeah, that's right, bro. Fuck, brother. Yeah, and um, like you said, man, like, it was like I was a PT in jail in mm-hmm. the sense of, like, because that's what I did, man, you know? Like, so many of all my mates, they've always been addicted to drugs and all this sort of stuff, and- Man, I wouldn't, like, I used to smoke pot and that when I was a kid, you know, like, that was another thing that I, I got rid of um, pretty, well, when I say early, like, I think I was 20 when I stopped smoking yep. smoking pot. Mm. And, um, but yeah, all my mates and all that were fucking drug addicts when we were younger, like, even before I went to jail, like, man, some of my mates were shooting up when we were fucking 16 years old, 15, yeah. you know, yeah. shooting up. And, um, man, I was just drinking VBs and smoking billies, you know what I mean? But, <laughs> but you're definitely I, from Rocky. That's right. So <laughs> that's what I mean. I was yeah, just brother. like, fucking loved having a beer and a few bongs and shit. And all my other mates were doing crazy shit. But I sort of look back now and go, who was the crazy one? Like, fucking, I wasn't even under the influence of all that sort of stuff, but I was still doing all the same crazy doing shit. Doing all the bad that. shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, fucking, maybe it was me who was the fucking crazy one. I'm looking at them like they're crazy. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, so fucking, even in jail too, man, like all my mates in there and all that, they were all, but, and, you know, a lot of them are, you know, take subby techs and all yeah. that sort of shit. And, Man, I was just over in the corner doing push-ups, eating broccoli, bro. That's what I was doing, you know. And yeah. I just knew because I'd lived the life of, you know, selling drugs and, you know, all that on the outside of an early teenager. Like, mm. like, we were selling fucking pop, fucking fuck heaps, man, when I was like 15, 16. And I just knew when I went to jail, especially on that big sentence, and I come down here to the jails down in Brisbane and all that sort of stuff, I knew if I had any involvement in that sort of stuff, that would be the danger spot for me to spend in the rest of my life in prison, you know what I mean? Because I know junkies. I know what they're like, bro. They're fucking... And I was very... I prided myself on being a good cunt, you know what I mean? Mm. I wasn't a snaky cunt at all, you know? Yeah. Like what I said is what I did. And You're a good cunt that did bad shit, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. So yeah. I knew I couldn't get involved with these people because they were going to let me down. Someone was going to do something fucking bad to me or sneaky, but and that's when the violence comes. And oh, I just yeah. knew where it would go. Yeah. And um, so I just knew that to stay away from that scene that was their thing my thing was training you know so so might as well channel that that's right and yeah, yeah so i did that and i stuck in that lane the whole time the whole fucking time i was just that dude you know and man it's like it spread like wildfire bro like i'd man i when especially when i changed jails because i've been around i've been around to a few jails man i bet i did two and a half years up in rocky I did four years at Maribara. Mm. I did four years at Gatton. Slowly just migrating south. Yeah. And then <laughs> I did three years out at Palin. I've been to Burrellan yeah. and, you know, BCC, all these fucking Arthur Gorey. I've been to all of them. And um, everywhere I went, bro, like I'd just fucking start off with my towel out in the yard and doing a few crunches and fucking doing. I used to love doing abs, man, all the time. Every day was like an everyday thing. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I think I did that, oh. that year and a half that I did, yeah. bro, every day. Yeah. Tennis courts of fucking Woodford. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that was me, man. I'd just start off like by myself and buddy, before I knew it, man, you'd get a few months in and the next minute I got 10 blokes out on the fucking the thing with me, court. you know what yeah. I mean? And then everywhere I went, the same thing happened, man. Like fucking, it's like everyone just ventured towards me for fucking, like they wanted to 
have what I had, you know? Yeah, bro. And um, naturally, that's just what I found. Like, fucking, this is my thing. This is what I do, you know? And I love it. Have you noticed that on the outside as well, that people just gravitate towards you? 100%, bro. Yeah, it's like that energy of the natural born leader, right? Yeah. And, and now being able to use that to also channel into your fitness and obviously lead people from where they are to where they want to be. It's like you're almost living to your purpose. Yeah, exactly. And that's the way I sort of felt as well. It's like, man, I, I'm, I'm the same as you, bro. I don't have any trade. I don't fucking have anything like that. And like dead set, when it comes to like studying and shit, I'm fucking semi-retarded, you know what I mean? <laughs> like I've always been a hands-on person. Yeah. And obviously it's always been a weakness of mine, like doing any sort of study and like trying to use my fucking brain too much. So I've always been physical my whole life. Mm. And then I was like, well, maybe this is me, man. This is what I do, you mm. know? So I, I feel like I'm good at it. You know, people gravitate towards me f- without me even fucking, you know, that's just happening. So I was like, well, is this, this is me. This is what I'm supposed to do. And that's why I got into the fitness industry. Like when I got released from prison i got into construction high-rise construction yep and uh um, you tell me this actually yeah, yeah. and I, I did that for about 18 months mm. and that was hard yakka too man like you can imagine um you know like coming out of jail even though i was sort of fit and stuff like for the gym and all that sort of stuff like <laughs> our work fitness on a fucking construction site is a different type of fitness that's crazy hey yeah, yeah. and I, um, obviously, man, I'm not going to fucking sit here and, you know, color it in. Like, it was hard, man. Like, for the first six months, man, I played that fucking mental challenge every day, man. Like, sucking in fucking plaster dust every day and, you know, like, wiping shit out of my fucking eyes all the time. My feet were hurting, you know, like, all sorts of shit was going on. But I knew i needed to go through this you know i knew that fucking this is the way out for me you know mm. and i needed to grind that out and mm. uh because i knew so many blokes before me would take the easy option and go fuck this i'm just gonna Back start to doing, yeah and that's why they just i'd say you would have seen so many people come and go just in the year and a half you were locked up mate. Oh, bro, i was yeah. in the reception wing for the first year of my fucking lagging and i thought that was the turning point for me yeah Seen the same fucking heads come through the fucking that door two or three times in like the year, yeah. sometimes even four or five. You know what I mean? I was just like, nah. Yeah. That's because I was locked up six times in four years. No, six times in eight years, total of four years. And so I saw that, and I was like, if I don't change, that's gonna be me. But when I think back to it, that fucking was me. That's right. People, that fucking yeah. was. I was one of those people. There was people who were staying in there the whole time, yeah, watching, watching me. Yeah, you know what right. I mean. Yeah, you're watching other people, but they were watching. That was you. fucking yeah, exactly <laughs> right, brother. So that yeah. was a wake up call for me. It was just yeah. like you said, just seeing the same people coming in, coming in with the same stories too. Yeah. Oh, you wouldn't believe it. Fuck, it wasn't my fault this time. Yeah, this happened. That's right. And you know, I was out with fucking Johnny, and fucking we got into this, and this happened. Yeah, so can't. the blame game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at what's going on. That's right. Look at what's going on. You put yourself here, mate. And I used to sit there, and man, I dead set was a, like a fucking counsellor, bro. It's a fucking... And I still am today, as you know, as a PT. That's half your job, bro. You know, you got to hold space, bro. That's right. So you got to hold space, That was man. in jail as well, and that's why I got so good at it too, man. It's like... You try and fucking educate these fucking numbskull cunts like they're fucking like they're good cunts, but they just fucking keep doing the same stupid shit. Yeah. And I'm like, man, fucking. So that's obviously where I developed that skill, man. It's just like yeah. fucking. It was like I got the nickname Dad. You know, what I, mean? like, <laughs> I can like, see that, yeah, bro. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Oh, fuck, man. So oh. it was. Uh, that was a thing for me as well, and trying to bloody get through all of these young blokes and it's literally know, an adult kindergarten in there isn't it yeah that's right a lot and of the time you've got some real fucking hard men but you've got some real spastics too yeah oh, definitely man I've, <laughs> I've met some bloody characters mate like <laughs> fuck it oh. that's one oh. thing working in the reception wing is always an interesting day brother man fuck yeah so but um yeah and then the the fitness thing just come naturally to me man and you know then when I, I was doing the high rise construction and then 
I got to a stage where I was like, all right, I'm going to do my fucking, my Cert 4 and that in fitness and I'm going to start, you know, going in the direction of that. Mm. So I I did that. I started doing the study while I was doing the construction, you know, coming home at night, jumping on a laptop that I didn't even know fucking how to use at all. Like, man, that was testing me as well. Yeah. And that mental shit would kick back in, you know, like fucking no this is fucking this is what you fucking you practice for all these fucking years this is what you practice for Mm. this is when your mind's getting fucking weak this is where you fucking keep going you know and and then i got it done and fucking i ended up getting my certificate and juggling both jobs and i started working in the gym in brisbane and I'd work all day on the construction site. They'd go home, quickly have a shower, then get to the gym and start training a couple of people at the gym. And I wouldn't get home till late as well. And they were big days, man, real big days. But um, I knew that was that was another thing I had to do, you know. Like if I was going to make the conversion, you know, like transition, sorry, into to doing this, this mm. is what I need to do. It's not going to mm. happen any other way. And... um yep then i got to a stage where i had an opportunity to come down to the gold coast and the the ufc gym at ashmore was opening and because i had that background of more like um performance based training rather than like a a look of like a bodybuilder you know what i mean like i knew that that would be a good gym for me because you know it's fight based training and weights as well functional stuff Real functional and, stuff yeah, yeah. and like because i had that background of jail training hmm. there were so many different little bloody things that i knew how to do that you know most pts wouldn't really do because they don't have that what we had in there was very limited very you know? minimal but so yeah yeah you had to get pretty creative you yeah. know and I just knew that that was going to... Because going into, say, like a world's gym or whatever, just all like bodybuilders who flex with a pair of jocks on or whatever, that that wasn't my thing, you know? It didn't do nothing for me. Like, yeah. I take my hat off to them blokes, though. Like, they're probably the most disciplined athletes on the fucking planet mm. because they're on the hour, every hour. Yeah, it's not like a fucking... Like a, a bloke who plays soccer or something like trains two or three days a week and has a game on the weekend where they're on the hour with with everything yep so meals fucking sleep i understand the the discipline behind that and i take my hat off to them sort of blokes but it just wasn't me i hear that bro i hear that man i like to live my life a little bit more on the edges than fucking having to follow a routine to that strictness yeah that's right like it just i don't know how like that just would consume your whole life especially Mm. if you wanted to be really good at it too you know Mm. So, yeah, I was more performance-based, man. I was more impressed about what I could do and what I could make someone do from, you know, what they they start from this and then they end up here. Mm. It's like, now look what you can do, you know what I mean? Like, that was what sort of got me going. Yeah. So I knew that that gym was going to be good for me. And sure enough, like, I moved, I took a risk. I moved from Brisbane down to the Gold Coast without a job. I left a job paying me two grand a week. And moved to the Gold Coast, waiting for that gym to open. And um, I had some savings and I was digging into my savings, just surviving until the bloody gym opened. And then sure enough, buddy, I was onto it, buddy. I took off real quick. And um, yeah, I was smacking out some big days. It didn't take me long, man. Three weeks, I was fucking up and running. So, wow, bro. Yeah. But that just shows all the hard work was paying off. And this is the thing I think a lot of people see is, like for anyone that didn't meet you, they'll see and they'll see that your calendar's full. They don't know your fucking story. They don't know what it actually took. The ten years of being locked up, of creating the mindset that you have, and then all the work out after getting out of jail that last you know two two years or whatever, doing the course and fucking going through the trenches and working two fucking jobs. No one sees that shit. Yeah, that's right. They don't see the fucking hard work, bro. But yeah. this is what I mean. Like everyone has a fucking story to get to where they are today. Everyone, if they're, if they're doing somewhat right for themselves, they've got a fucking story there. Yeah. Unless they're handed it on a silver platter, we're not talking about those kinds. Fuck them. Yeah. You know. Bro, you've worked to get to where you are today. And so for anyone that's out there, you know, might be struggling with, you know, the transition between jail and fucking wanting to get back to the normal world or for someone that might be even just wanting to start the gym for the first time, what would be a piece of advice you'd give to them? Man, like I said a bit earlier, man, the, the, the best thing is the quicker you start looking in the mirror and stop fucking creating that excuse for yourself, the better you're going to be. You know what I mean? And 
that was the thing that I I think I'd done differently to most people. I started that fucking straight away, mm-hmm. and I even though I had such a long time in jail, like I reckon I would have got at least nine years of that sort of mentality. A bit of reflection in there yeah. for nine years. So yeah, a lot of people like will fuck around and then try and pull the reins in with 12 months to go or whatever it doesn't work like that man like you it's short lived you know so it would be focus on that fucking mental side of it you know what I mean like fucking everyone yeah you want to you know get out looking fresh and stuff like that but man that all doesn't matter if you're fucking back in there three months later like mm-hmm. it's all for nothing you know or you're fucking back on the pipe the minute you get out you exactly. look good for about two days that's right man yeah. so it's the mental side of it bro strength and that mental strength like fucking you got to realize you need to be disciplined if you if anything in life if you haven't got discipline man you got fucking nothing you know what i mean couldn't have said it better myself yeah. bro that's the beauty of discipline right is that you practice it in one area. It doesn't just stay in that area. It comes across to everything and it can be applicable in everything in your life. If you build discipline in the gym, it means you build discipline in lots of other areas as well because generally you're eating better, you're thinking better, you're sleeping better. There's all these things that go together, right? So by building discipline in one area, it literally does just help you to build discipline in general. Exactly, man. And yeah. it, it carries on to every walk of life, you know? Like the, the one thing that I'm trying to focus on at the moment too is like I've got that, with obviously my health and my fitness and all that now i'm trying to replicate that into a business side of things as well it's the same principle yeah you know what i mean like i've just got to learn how i can use that same mentality and then get it into business side of things as well and it's i'm not trying to be a fucking millionaire or nothing like that but i just want to be able why not yeah well you know like i'm (laughs) i'm sort of I know I'm saying, not bro. doing it for the money type of yeah. thing. I'm doing it more for like, you know, I don't want my family to ever go without anything. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? So that's that's what I'm doing it for, Benny, you know, is like I I don't want the ship fucking sinking on my fucking watch, you know what I mean? Like it's it's my job. I've got a little family now and Yeah, bro. You know, like my dad's still up north in Rockhampton and he survives on fuck all, mate, you know what I mean? And um if I can do something and buddy, you know, carry the fucking ship, you know, that's that's what gets me up every morning, you know. So it's it's not about oh, I need more money so I can get some more materialistic things. I just mm. I just don't want my family to struggle, you know. Yeah, and that's a big purpose to have, bro. Is obviously yeah. to look after and be that provider, yeah. which for us as men is what we need to do. That's like pretty much yeah. our job is to our role as a man is to provide to to nurture, right? And obviously not just by provider, I don't mean just, you know, pay for everything, but I mean, protect the family, look after them, make sure everyone's all good. And I mean, from where you were, even when you first got out to where you are today, like four years later, yeah? Four years? Yeah, just over four years. Just over four years, man. Like even just that journey there, that would have been a transition of its own. You would have had your ups and downs during that time. But to get to where you are today, man, like this shit doesn't happen overnight. And this has been, well, what, 15 years in the process. This is where I think a lot of people go wrong when it comes to making changes, whatever it might be, getting off the drugs, stopping gambling, you know, not being a womanizer, getting out of a life of crime. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. That journey to get you to where you are today has been 15 years in the process, even though you made that decision fucking, what, 13 years ago, right? Yeah. So, I mean, if there's anyone else out there that might be struggling with just that, you know, trying to make that choice to go from what they were doing to what they want to do. Um, what would be something that you could give to them or something that you would give as advice to them to help them to make that transition? Yeah, definitely don't try and do it in bloody two weeks. You know what I mean? Like it's it's a process, man. Like and just check back in with yourself every now and again, reassuring yourself that Reflection, I, right? I, I'm doing all right here. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's been, you know, little times in my bloody mind where like especially because I, I find myself because I've, I've got a lot of uh really good friends and that these days and uh, they've you know we're all fucking 40 years old now but the difference is they've been out for the whole time and they've set themselves up really well and um sometimes I just think fucking hell like I'm behind the eight ball here you know what I mean but then I just go come on wait wait a minute you know, have a look what's fucking you've you've done in the last fucking few years mm. and stuff. I, I'm actually going all right. Mm. You know, I'm I'm not sort of you know like delusional in the sense of like uh, fuck. You know, like um, I'm doing fucking the best, but 
it's I just keep sort of reassuring myself that I'm on the right track here, you know, like as everything I work for, it's going to take hard work, you know, yep. it's not just going to just all of a sudden just fall into place, you know, like I've got to every day you're going to work for it. But that would be one thing I'd say to him is just, man, like just keep checking back in and just go back and have a look where you've come from and even if it was the last six months or whatever mm. like go, actually i am fucking doing pretty good here you know like fucking, if you're moving forward you're doing good you a lot of people I mean? think that progress is linear yeah they think that it's just like from point a to point it's same with weight loss right i'll use this analogy all the time it's like a lot of stuff we talk about in fitness can be applied to business can be applied to life like when it comes to weight loss like you know they might lose fucking let's say five kilos but then they put on another two kilos, so they fall back down, but then they lose, you know, another three or four kilos, you know, and you're always on that climb. But if you look at it on a day-to-day level, some days it feels like you feel, you're not doing so great. It feels like you're doing shit. But if you zoom out and have a look at, like you said, how far you've come in the last six months, 12 months, two years, if you're putting steps in front of each other and actually trying to move forward, you always will move forward, even if it's only in the slightest little bit. Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah. Yep. And it's like, one thing I always sort of, you know, look back on too is like, you know, you got out at 36 years old with zero, you know what I mean? And, you know, like I'm doing all right. Like, you know, like I said, I've got a, a nice little family now. We live in a good, but nice house. Mm. We got cars, we got bikes, whatever, you know, like we're doing all right. You yeah, know fuck I mean? yeah, we're bro. We're doing all right. And yeah. it gives you that time to sort of look back and be proud of now how far you have come, bro. Yeah. And then, and like I said earlier too, it's a, like, uh, a big thing is my, my best mate he passed away and he ended up committing suicide over fucking uh ice as well and wow, bro. Um, so sorry it, to hear man yeah it's it's been a that's been a big part of my life where he was we were that close so it's like losing your fucking brother you know what mm. i mean like it was mm. and he all them years i was in custody um he never let my bank account drop under fucking a hundred bucks fucking every christmas day he'd take my dad fucking lunch anytime my missus ever had something fucking happen he'd go around and help her give her money and the stepson or every birthday every christmas all presents for him and like Mm. did everything for me Mm. absolutely everything like i said all my court fees fucking I wouldn't be in the position that I am today with without him, you know, and that was one thing that really sort of hit me hard in the sense of um, not being able to help him in that way. Like, you know, like I used to talk to him every second day for fucking 14 years from fucking prison, you know. Yeah, bro. And sometimes he wouldn't answer because, fuck, he'd be off his head somewhere or something, but... A couple of days old or something yeah, like that. Yeah, so... Um, but man, he just fucking never, never, ever dropped the ball of like fucking being a mate, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like he just, and then when I got out, like we spent some time together and that, and um, he he even moved in with me for a while because he just, he knew that he, I was the only one that sort of, he didn't even think about that fucking shit when he was fucking with yep. me, you know what I mean? Because yep. yep. we were both like exactly, that's where I got like the the fitness stuff from Benny is from him. He, used, he was the most headstrong fucking bloke I've ever met in my life. And he was like a proper drill sergeant when it comes <clears> to <throat> like, like training and fucking just all. I So everything that I've got today in that, like in that headspace of training and dieting, and I all, I got it from him. Mm. And then to see him get broken down by something like that, the most mentally strong bloke I know to get destroyed by that. It's crazy, right? Yeah, and um, and then getting up at his funeral and talking in front of everyone that was probably the hardest thing I've ever done, mm. Benny. Fucking, that was a that was a fucking big challenge for me, you know, and um. Yeah, I I do believe that he's up there fucking steering the ship for me, man, just sort of pointing me in the right directions and that because, man, it's fucking strange. Like, obviously, I went through a a rough time when he passed away, but, um, man, it's like my life has just gotten better and better and better. It's like he's fucking... It's like he's doing it for me, you know? Yeah, but I think that, um, 
you know, in that aspect, he'd definitely be giving you some sort of guidance, but it's up oh, to yeah. us to make the decision actually listen to that, right? Exactly, yeah, that's right. You know, have yeah. that intuition, and it'd definitely be helping with that, I believe, bro. But yeah, so yeah. many people get these taps, you know, to go this way or go that way. And, you know, it's like, hey, what you're doing, you're not going to get very far with that. And they keep doing the same thing, keep doing the yeah. same thing. You know, I think it's up to us as, you know, <laughs> as who we are to sometimes make those hard choices. Yeah. To sometimes make the decisions, but even though they don't, you know, they're not normal, they might feel like they need to be done. Because a lot of times those hard decisions that you make are the ones that end up with you being where you want to be in life. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and fucking... Yeah, like I even remember like, you know, so when he was staying with me, like sometimes he'd just like fucking get upset and I'd be like, Fuck, what's going on? And he's like, man, he goes, I just watch how you do things and stuff like that. And he goes, I just see me in you what I used to be like, you know mm. what I mean? And now I feel like I'm a fucking broken soul, you know? Like, and that used to upset him in that sense of like, he goes, you're too full on for me now, you know? Like, but that was exactly what I was like and mm. now you, you, you're you that person, you know, and that it was, it's like it was too much for him sort of thing and then he um ended up moving back to the Sunshine Coast with his girlfriend and I told him it's not a good idea and all that sort of stuff and yeah, then eventually it just, yeah, and like he he wanted to do the, the PT stuff as well and um he talked about it for a long time before I got out of prison, you know. Yeah, Bill. And, and I got out and I did it, and I, you know, like I, everything that we talked about, I did it, you know, and it sort of upset him a, a little bit in that way of like, fuck, man, like fucking. You know, we always talked about this, but the only difference is you actually fucking done it, you know. And then he ended up, yeah, just fucking. It's not like he was a an everyday user mm. it was like he because he he burnt out all of the dopamine or whatever it is of course yeah then you just go into psychosis so yeah. you you miss the feel good part and then you go straight into the fucking wigging out yeah and that's where he was at you know he'd burnt out all that shit and then he would like go three months without anything at all and fucking things would be fucking going good and fucking that little demon in his fucking head would trick him into fucking doing it. And Just do it this once. You'd be doing real well. Yeah. And You'd then, feel better for it. Yeah. And yeah. then fucking bang. And then he'd just go into psychosis and fucking do crazy shit and fucking... And then there's like, he'd... We went through this fucking a hundred times mm. after I'd been out of prison. Yeah. And um, then he... um. Obviously, he used to, he, and he was, you know, like a lot of addicts and that would always have some excuse. He was the most honest person when it comes to like, he would break it down exactly what's going on in his head and mm. he wouldn't have an excuse for anything. He was raw about it, you know? And, yeah. And, but it's like, man, he goes, he knew exactly every fucking answer and what to do and what not to do and all that. And he goes, man, it's, it's like that fucking demon in my head is too strong, man. It's like I fucking, I've battled this cunt for nine years. Yeah. And I'm fucking still getting done by this cunt, you know. And, mm. and then this one time he, because he's misses at the time, like obviously when he'd get off his head, she's like, I can't go near him. He's just got to do his fucking crazy shit for a couple of days. And once he's out of sleep, then he's all good again. He rings yeah. back out and then I go back around there and, we clean up the fucking mess you know mm. and that's what she always done is just fucking fucking she'd just cruise off and but this last time um she wasn't answering his calls because fucking she was filthy with him you know because mm. after fucking i don't know how many fucking times but a lot over the yeah, years but, like, yeah, a yeah. long time and then um yeah she fucking wasn't answering his calls then she'd get the text message one would be a real nasty one and then there'd be a sad one there'd be a nasty one then there'd be a sad one mm. and then the last one was you know tell mum tell mum I'm sorry and uh that was when she knew that fucking something him. was up and he, she tried to ring him fucking straight back and he didn't answer and then um 
she rang his mum because she was in Calliope, which is a little bit out of Rocky, a mm. couple of hours out of Rocky. And um, she rang his mum and said, fuck, I think he might be going to do something fucking silly. Do you want to go around there and fucking check up on him? And uh, anyway, his mum's just jumped straight in the car. She was about 10 minutes from his place and um, they got a big electric fucking fence out the front and she couldn't get in because she's an old lady you know she couldn't get up over the fence mm. so she um had to wait until his sister got there she was another 10 minutes or whatever and um she ended up jumping the fence letting her in and then they both went in there and found him hanging there mm. and uh me having this conversation with his mum was fucking intense bro like she was like walking me through what happened you know and um she goes, yeah, we we come through the door and we fucking seen him hanging there and ran over and sort of cut him down and he was still warm. And uh, she was like, fucking, Dean, if I could have got over that fence, I reckon I would have got there before he'd done. He was still oh, warm, brother. you know? And I said, don't fucking do that to yourself, don't. Mm. And, um, yeah, fucking, that was a fucking intense conversation, bro. And, like, because, like I said, it was... It was like I lost fucking half half of me, you know. Yeah, but I could yeah. imagine what it was like for her as well because her daughter, thirteen years before, hung herself as well. So well, yeah. she's lost two kids to suicide. And um, fuck, man, she's the strongest woman I fucking strongest human being I know. Like she's fucking unbelievable. And um, yeah, then so obviously all the trauma from that surrounded around ice you know like there's nothing i hate more than fucking ice yes know? brother there's nothing i mean you've seen the worst of the worst from it yeah i've that's lost right. friends from it as well yeah. man like it's it's not good shit no nah, man it literally ruins lives yeah and when you're dealing with someone that's using ice you're not actually dealing with the person you're dealing with the drug yeah because it takes over exactly yeah and i've got other mates who are go through this sort of shit as well but after my mate fucking it did something to me man it changed me in that way of like now when other mates doing it and i'm like listen i'm not going to fucking go around in circles with you about something that's not even real yeah you know what i mean like we've been here this many times before yeah i'm done you know i fucking I know you're not going to listen to me because I've done this with fucking so many of my friends and the same outcome always fucking happens. Mm. So I'm done, you know, and they end up in back in jail and all that sort of shit and fucking... You and know, if you don't make a change, you're going to end up the same. Bro, I fucking, I've helped that many fucking people, man, and fucking... Like, one one of my mates I've helped fucking three times getting out of jail and he just keeps repeating the same shit, doing the same shit, and mm. now he wants me to fucking just pick up all the crumbs again. Help him again, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, you know what? You've got to go learn the hard lesson, mate. Fucking, you know, so now I just don't even fucking... You come and talk to me when you fucking fix yourself because yep. I can't do nothing for you. Especially with what you do now as a PT, bro, you're taking on so much energy. Yeah. You haven't got the capacity to be going and putting your energy out to absolutely everyone else anymore. Yeah. You know? Bro, that's um something that I guess was really I'm really glad we touched on because ice for me was my problem and I've lost friends because of it. I've fucking had to push people away because of it. But it is a real issue. It is a hundred percent a real issue. But the the problem is that there's not enough awareness around it. People don't have these conversations enough about it. Yeah. Because, I mean, let's just say that someone listens to this conversation that's not at that point yet. They hear this conversation, they think, I don't want to fucking end up like that. I think that's powerful enough. Yeah. You know, because there will be someone that listens to this conversation that does go, well, fuck, that's not me. I don't want to be that person anymore. And they'll make the change. Mm. Because at the end of the day, you can go to rehab, you can go to fucking jail, you can go do the thing. But if you're not going there with the right intentions of actually want to get off for yourself and you're being pushed into doing it, you're never going to change. Yeah. It comes down to making, like for you, it came down to making the fucking choice. Like for me, it came down to making the fucking choice. You've got to make that fucking choice to get away from it, whatever it might be that you're struggling with. You've got to make the fucking choice and then put one foot in front of the other to make the decision. Yeah, definitely, man. 100%, mm. bro. Yeah, it's, um, that's why I thought I'd touch on that too is because that was a, that was a big thing for me. Yes, you know? bro. And ever since then, I think that sort of, because we always talked about the the fitness industry and all that, and we always used to train together. Like he was at Maribara with me mm. uh, when I was locked up up there, mm. and 
he um we did everything together and that's where I really developed the passion for it you know and um so it's like now he's gone and stuff like that it's like this is who I am you know this is you're carrying the torch for both of you bro yeah that's right I love that man yeah bro I love that bro and that's what pushed me to like all right I'm gonna fucking this is what I'm gonna do yeah this is who I am yeah this is who we were you know yeah fuck yeah bro that's why I'm sort of yeah doing it like this these days man i love that well marxy yeah. thanks very much for coming on bro i really yeah, appreciate it i appreciate it bro fucking absolute knowledge bombs now i know there's gonna be so many people that'll get something positive out of that and if there are people that want to reach out to you even if it's for you know program or you know to have a chat about your story or even to come on as a client bro where would they find you uh the ufc gym in ashmore that's yep. where i'm I'm based at the moment yep. and just or you can touch base on me on instagram yeah i'll drop your links and everything below yeah. bro, but thanks very much man really appreciate it not a problem benny thanks for having me mate my pleasure brother